In this video, I'm going to talk about the different stages of breast cancer. This is one of the most common questions and the first question most people ask about their breast cancer. What stage is it? but I'm gonna start with what stage is not. Stage is not the same as grade. So you'll find out from the biopsy what the grade is of the tumor. The pathologist can tell you whether it's grade one, two, or three. That's how the tumor looks under the microscope relative to normal breast tissue. But that's not stage. Stage is where the cancer is in your body. Specifically, how big is the tumor? how many, if any, lymph nodes are involved. Lymph nodes are the glands under your arm and over your collarbone, and whether or not the tumor is in other parts of your body. The pathologist can actually not answer that question from the biopsy alone. All they have is a little piece of tissue called a biopsy, and they cannot tell you where it is in your body. So you'll be looking at that pathology report from the biopsy wondering what stage Many women will look at grade and think that they have, for example, stage three when it's grade three. Don't feel silly, don't feel stupid, this is so common. You really have to ask your doctor what stage you have. And the first thing you're going to be told is you have clinical stage such and such, because that's all we know when we first see you and have the pictures from a mammogram or an ultrasound or in some women an MRI. The pathologic stage is what the pathologist tells us after all of your surgery. And sometimes we don't even know if the cancer has spread to other parts of your body because most women don't need to have scans of their whole body. I'm gonna explain that in more detail in just a moment. But let's talk about the staging system that we use. We use the staging system that looks at the tumor, the T, the nodes, which is N, and the M, which is metastases. So the T, N, M. And you can ask your doctor what each stage is or each category you have. That may not always be very clear in your doctor notes or in the pathology report, but this is something you might wanna know. So each one is divided into categories, as I mentioned. The T categories are one, two, and three based on the tumor size. If it's a T1, it's under two centimeters. I'm not talking inches, I'm talking centimeters. If it's a T category two, it's between 2.1 and five centimeters. And if it's a T3, it's over five centimeters. There's some subcategories in T3 as well. And if it's T4, there are other characteristics of the tumor as well such as being attached to the skin or attached to the chest wall. That's pretty uncommon, but it's important to know that it's not so rare that if it's your case, that nobody's ever seen a tumor like yours. We see enough of people like that, that you're not alone. Now the N category is the number of lymph nodes. Zero means you have no lymph nodes at all. And with each increasing N up to N3, you have more and more nodes. Now the surgeon does not know how many nodes they're taking out. They just take out the fat pad when they remove the lymph nodes. There's also something called a sentinel node procedure where they identify between one and as many as seven nodes that take up a dye or a radioisotope. Those are the central nodes or the sentry nodes, if you will, that drain the breast. So you may not have all your lymph nodes removed. In fact, most people don't these days. And then the last category is the M or metastasis category, and this is either zero or one. And if you have M0 disease, it means you either had scans that didn't show any disease that we could see, or that you didn't need scans. And most women don't need scans. So if you didn't have them, don't worry that you didn't have tests that you should have had. We only do scans in people who have a very large tumor or lymph nodes that we can feel or who have their lymph nodes removed and have many more nodes positive than we thought. So that's the T, N, and M staging system. So We've covered the T, N, and M categories. Those are then combined into different stages. 
we go from stage zero, which is ductal carcinoma in situ, the nodes aren't looked at, we don't scan your whole body, and then together the T and the N and M go all the way up to stage four. If you have disease in other parts of your body besides the breast and the lymph nodes, that's stage four, regardless of how big the tumor is or how small, regardless of how many lymph nodes are involved. It's quite uncommon in this country for people to be diagnosed with stage four disease. It's less than 10% of women who are diagnosed with stage four. Stage one is quite common, negative lymph nodes in a smallish tumor. But if you have stage two or stage three breast cancer, both are very treatable with the treatments that we have these days. I'm going to talk about the different treatments right now. Surprisingly, while stage plays a big role in how we treat people surgically, it actually plays very little role in how we decide other treatments, such as radiation treatment or systemic treatment. Systemic treatment is treatment that goes through your whole body or your whole system. And we give systemic treatment to decrease the risk that the cancer cells will show up in other parts of your body later down the road, many years down the road or a year down the road. So it's possible, even when a tumor is very small, that cells, little parts of that tumor, can go through your bloodstream or the lymphatics to other parts of your body. For example, the liver, the lungs, or the bone. Those are the most common places it can go. But we can scan you, I say from stem to stern, and not see them with any of our currently available tests. So we use different characteristics like biomarkers, estrogen and progesterone receptors, and a protein called HER2, which we'll cover in other videos, as well as things like the grade of the tumor, to figure out how likely that is to have happened. Do you notice I didn't say anything about stage? So we really use more the personality of the tumor to figure out how likely it is that that spread has happened and how likely it is that these different treatments will help you and decrease that risk. Because our goal is to cure you. The goal of treatment is to decrease the chance that cancer will come back in other parts of your body. I wish you weren't going through this, but please be hopeful that with the treatments we have today that we will do everything we can to increase your chance of getting through this. If you'd like to learn more about your own breast cancer, visit our website at yerba.com. I've really liked talking with you today. If you like this, click like and subscribe, and in the comments, let me know if you want to hear something else. Perfect, okay.